Hey everyone, um, the purpose of this video is actually to discuss the installation of my Tesla Powerwalls. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank everyone to uh, who used my referral code from before, which made me made it possible for me to receive this uh, the Founder Series Powerwall to your right. Uh, the difference between the standard Powerwall and the Founder Series is it's red as you can see right here, and it has the signatures of Elon Musk. JB and Franz. Other than that, technically they're the same thing. Uh, they're both 13.5 kilowatts of storage. Um, they both weigh 350 pounds um, each, which is the reason why I have them attached to my uh, poured concrete foundation in my basement. And uh, that's about it. Other than that, it's, it's really cosmetic, the difference. Um, before I get into that, uh, the specifics of my installation um, I thought I'd do something a little different. So you'll notice there's a uh, a jacket that says Tesla to the left. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have a giveaway for that jacket. Um, as you may know, Tesla is discontinuing their free supercharging option when you buy a new or inventory Model S or X as of September 15th of 2018. So after that, they are, you won't be able to get uh, free supercharging with the user referral. Uh, you'll get one year supercharging. And um, just to sweeten the pot, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to have a drawing for the first five people that use my referral code by September 15th. That drawing will allow that person to get this Tesla jacket, which, which is what you see to the left. Now, this is no ordinary jacket. Um, this is a owner's jacket. So as you can see, it says Tesla on the front, um, excuse me, on the back and on the front. If I turn this around. You see it says Tesla owner right there. So it's a limited jacket and I think it's something nice to give to an, in, to an individual um, that's interested in uh, purchasing a, a used uh, new or inventoried Model S or X or a performance Model 3 by September 15th. So once again, thank you for those people that use my referral code and if you're interested in purchasing uh, a new or inventory model S or X, you'll be able to win a chance or get a chance to uh, win a, a Tesla owner's jacket. But let's get into the specifics of the uh, installation. So to the right, you'll see this is the gateway. So the gateway is what handles the flow of the flow of power, where power is directed when it comes into the house. The gateway, you'll see these two accessories at the top of the gateway. That is, those are actually antennas. So those antennas actually connect directly to Tesla's network. So if for whatever reason you lose power or you lose network connectivity, the gateway still maintains access to Tesla's network and you can still um, get uploaded information regarding your installation. Right here is one of the sub panels they installed. And in this sub panel are the breakers for the actual batteries. So I have them power wall one and power wall two, the breaker for um, my backed up panel. So the panel that will receive power if I use um, lose power to the grid, as well as my solar panel, which I'll show you in a second. So what you see here, you see multiple panels. The first one I'll show you, this was actually my main panel before. This is the only panel I had in the house and it was pretty crowded. And it says main load backup. So everything in this panel is actually going to continue to receive power. If I lose connectivity from the get grid, this power will come from the, the batteries. And what they did is they took some panels, some breakers out of here and moved them to different sub panels, which I'll show you in a second. So, but the key thing to remember is that this panel will always receive power once, if whether the grid is online or offline. Now this panel, which is called main load, no backup. So this, these are breakers. The breakers in here do not receive power if I lose connectivity from the grid. And what I moved here is I moved the, uh, 
the breakers for the high power wall connectors, the two of them, as well as AC. These uh, breakers use a lot of power, so of course if I lose connectivity or lose power um, in the middle of the night or during the day when no one's home, I don't want these, uh, these breakers to drain my battery. So that's why they removed to their own specific panel. And this panel right here is main load, solar load, excuse me. And this panel holds the uh, breakers for my inverters. The four kilowatt and then the five kilowatt inverter. This panel is connected to a disconnect outside and that disconnect is connected to the panel I showed you earlier that has the uh, breakers for the batteries as well as the uh, main panel backup. And this right here, this wasn't installed by Tesla, but I'm glad I can still use it. So this is the transfer switch I installed some years ago. Um, so this transfer switch I can still use, and I think it's beneficial because what happens is I live in the Northeast, and of course I have snow that can cover my panels in the winter time or non-sunny days in the winter. And even though I have battery power, if those panels are covered, I'm not going to receive any power. So I can still use this transfer switch, which is connected to the panel that says main load backup to power key um, key breakers. You know, the uh, my uh, refrigerator, my microwave. So it's a good option to have just in case the panels are, are not visible to the sun or um, in the middle of winter when I'm not getting that much sun and the battery charging is, is pretty low. So what I'll show you next, I'm going to show you the uh, actually how the power flow is done through the app and uh, take it from there. So this is a video of the app. Um, of course I'm using my phone to record so I can't show you my phone but I can show you on my iPad. So you see how the sun is generating 2.1 kilowatts the house is using 1.1 and the other and the remainder is going to the um, it's going to the batteries so here I can actually show you that the battery is charging so it's 82 percent right now um, the power flow shows you the flow of the power and one thing I want to show you guys is the reason why I don't have the batteries associated with the wall chargers once the um, if I lose power to the house so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start charging from my wife's phone so I could do it here but I better I want to show you the, exactly what happened to see, show you the flow of how everything kicks on. So right now the house is only using 1.1 kilowatts. If I start charging my car, give it a moment, and you'll actually see the charging will start momentarily. And you should see the house jump up. So it's going to 2.4, 5.1, 6.7. A little over 10 kilowatts in a moment. There you go. So you see it jump up. So it's using 10.6 and it should actually go up a little bit more because the car uses about 10 kilowatts. So now it's drawing everything between the solar and the batteries. And if I go back, see how it's using 8.5 watt, 5 kilowatts right now? Since I have two power walls, it can go up to 10 kilowatt. It can do a 10 kilowatt draw. Each power wall can do 5 kilowatt draw. So if I only had 5 kilowatts or one power wall, this would be 5, this would be 2, and the rest would come from the grid. But since I have 
can have up to a 10 kilowatt draw because I have two power walls. 8.6 is coming from the batteries, two is coming from solar, it's using 10.6, and still nothing is coming from the grid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start charging both cars. So the Model S is charging right now. I'm gonna start charging the Model X. So I just hit start. Let's give it a moment. See, it's starting to take something from the grid. And now it should be close to over 20 kilowatts. So now the batteries are at capacity in terms of 10 kilowatts are being drawn from the batteries. And there's two batteries. 2.0 kilowatts is still being drawn from the sun, from the solar, and now 9.5 kilowatts are being drawn from the grid. So that's a lot of power. So I would drain my batteries really quickly. Um, if I had a power outage in the middle of the night and I'm charging the cars at the same time. So now I'm going to stop the charging on the car. So we should see it drop down. See it? And right there, it just stopped pulling from the grid. And now I'm gonna stop charging the car. And you should see it drop down again. And right there, you see that? Now the energy is going back into the battery and the remaining of the electrical is going back into the house. And if you look at... Now if I go back to the uh, home screen, you see different options. We were in power flow a moment ago. We see performance, backup history, and customize. So I'll start with customize first. So customize basically gives me two options, backup only and self-powered. Backup only, as it states here, means that the power wall will be used just for backups. So for nothing else, um, unless I lose power, that's the only time the battery will be used and reserve 100% for it. So this is great if you just want to use it as a backup system. But to be honest, with the amount of money that you spend on a power wall, and its use and its versatility, I'd never use it for this. Self-powered on the other hand, which is what I normally use, means that it'll store whatever solar power you have in the battery, and then when the sun is not around, it'll use that solar power up to whatever you reserve. So I reserve 20% of my uh, power wall for use. So once it gets down to 20%, it won't use it for, it won't use the battery at all. So particularly at night, or during times when the sun is not, not open or up, I should say, it'll use the battery. And then once it gets to 20%, it'll stop. That 20% is great because what happens is if, uh, let's say, the power goes out, then it'll start drawing from this 20%. But, you know, so which it's just nice to have that type of reserve. If I didn't set, if I set it lower than that, and let's say I lose power for, you know, in the wintertime, like the example I gave earlier, or if I had it draw down to 0%, then I have no reserve. And if during power outage occurs, the batteries are no use to me. So once again, it'll draw down and use the battery to power the house, you know, when the sun goes down or when, the, uh, when there's no power available from the grid, up to 20%. Backup history basically shows me when the backups were used so when the power was, was turned off, so this is when they were actually doing installation of the power walls themselves. And two times they tested not having power to a house and making sure that the power, power wall is being used 
to to power the house. So each time this is seven minutes, six minutes, and it's great. And then performance. Performance tells you, you know, basically how much of your house is being used by solar and how much was used by Powerwall. So today, you know, none of it's used being used is using Powerwall, and then twelve percent was powered by solar. If I go back, uh, I can go back a week. And it shows me now 20% was being used to power the house. 20% of solar was used to power the house. And the other 15% was used, uh, using the power from this power wall to power the house. I go back. So, and that's about it. Um, as a reminder, once again, Tesla discontinuing the, sup the uh, free supercharging for life. Uh, option when purchasing a Model S or X, new or inventoried. So um, feel free to use my referral, referral code. And for the first five people that use the code, not only will you get uh, free supercharging for the purchase of a new or inventoried Model S or X or a Performance Model 3, you will also be uh, entered to win a entered to win a uh, um, uh, authentic Tesla owner's jacket. Of which at, um, that I will be raffling off uh, once those individuals take delivery of their vehicles. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll make certain to respond back as quickly as I can. Take care.